Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel and welcome to In Memorial Month. Uh, throughout May, I'll be reviewing two retro reviews uh, in honor of two childhood figures of mine that we lost over the past couple of years. But before we get started, we gotta pay tribute to another legend of mine. Uh, I don't know if it's official, but the camera that I've been using for all these reviews, the uh, Panasonic HC V770, has officially crapped out. Uh, again, I don't know if this is official because I can turn the camera on, but uh, I just get the black screen of death. Uh, so nothing on here. It can record audio, but it can't record video. Uh, so again, I don't know if it's just dead or not working. Maybe I can get it repaired and fixed. But until then, I'm gonna be doing all my videos for the foreseeable future on this web camera, just like I did in 2020. With that said, let's get started with this series of retro reviews. This week, I'll be paying tribute to the late Paul Rubens, who passed away last year of cancer. Uh, really, really tragic, uh, but I have to give him major kudos for not telling anybody and having it be a private battle. And I don't think there's any way I can go about honoring you without talking about your most famous movie featuring your most famous character. Of course, I'm talking about Pee-wee's Big Adventure, which came out in 1985, starring Pee-wee Herman, directed by Tim Burton. The movie follows everyone's favorite lovable man-child, Pee-wee Herman, as his bike is stolen. And this bike is so precious to him. It's the most important thing in his life. So he goes on a cross-country road trip, and by that I mean from California to San Antonio, to try and track his bike down. Over the past two years, I've been taking improv classes at Improv LA. Uh, it's one of the acting schools here in Los Angeles, uh, and I've been taking it for a couple reasons. One, because I forgot how much fun it was, but two, and the more important reason, it would help me in my day-to-day -day life, whether it be work, social gatherings, or even this YouTube channel, because I don't write scripts when I do these reviews. I have a long list of notes in what I want to talk about for each review, and then I just talk off the top of my head about each movie I'm reviewing. And doing these improv classes has certainly helped. I've learned a lot in terms of the history of improv, learning to not actually think and just be in the moment, character comedy, uh, different types of improv like Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Tokyo, Canadian. It's all been a lot of fun. Now I know what all of you are thinking right now. Why are you telling us all this? What's the significance? I don't know. Okay, no, I actually do know. I just wanted an excuse to quote this movie. Um, the reason I laid all that out for you is because Pee Wee Herman was born of improv. Back in the day, Paul Rubens was part of the Groundlings, another famous improv school here in Los Angeles. And he was in a group along with people like Phil Hartman and Cassandra Peterson. The latter would go on to create the character of Elvira. And so many comedians that you may know, usually the ones that go over to SNL, started at the Groundlings, whether it be Will Ferrell, Will Forte, Kristen Wiig, Maya Rudolph, Melissa McCarthy, Jim Rash from Community. They were all a part of the Groundlings. And in the case of Paul Rubens, he created the Pee Wee Herman show at the Groundlings, which was basically a riff and a satire of those old 1950s TV shows made for kids, like Howdy Doody Time. And it was such a big hit that, of course, a movie had to be made. And having rewatched this movie twice in the last two years, once when Paul Rubens died and the other in prep for this review, it still holds up. In fact, it's even better than I remember it as a kid. There are two major figures who are responsible for the success of this movie. The first is Pee Wee Herman. He is without a doubt one of the great comedy legends out there. He's got the iconic gray tuxedo, the red bow tie, the pants that are too short for him. He is just an overall legend and one of the most lovable characters I can think of. He's so joyful, he's so innocent, and there is not a cynical bone in his body. Everything around him 
is just wondrous to him. He is absolutely fascinated by everything out there in the world, uh, and it makes me wish that there were more people like Pee Wee out there. Uh, not to the extent that they're man children, but to the extent that they live happy lives and they don't let a whole lot bother them. And of course, that's not to say that Pee Wee Herman is completely oblivious to some bad things out there. Uh, like, the minute he meets Francis, another great character in this movie, he knows instantly this guy's bad news. But Pee Wee Herman is great, he's so funny, he's so lovable, and just the situations that he gets into and how he reacts to them is absolutely priceless. It makes you wonder, is this guy a man-child? Like, is he an adult that acts like a kid? Or is he actually... A kid, it's just we as the audience are seeing him as an adult because he doesn't have a job, he doesn't make any money, and he seems a little bit naive about a lot of things out there. It's kind of an interesting thing to talk about, but yeah, Pee Wee Herman's great. You've noticed that I've never said Paul Rubens is fantastic as Pee Wee Herman. That's because Pee Wee is in the same vein as the Muppets, where you don't really see them as being played by another actor. You just see them as a full living embodiment. I mean, back when Paul Rubens was alive, there were points where he would be booked on talk shows as himself, and then other times the talk shows would go, we want to book Pee Wee Herman. So Pee Wee Herman would just show up on talk shows and just act himself. The other person that really makes this movie what it is is Tim Burton. This is his first feature film, and it took me about 15 years to realize that he actually made this movie. And re-watching it as an adult, you could clearly tell it's his movie because it's very weird. There are things that happen in this world that you just kind of accept, sort of in the same vein as Edward Scissorhands, where, oh, there's a guy with scissors for hands, and we just all accept it. You just accept that Pee Wee Herman is this man-child who has the best life you could possibly think of. And not only is this the directorial debut for Tim Burton, who does a great job, but this is also the first score composed by Danny Elfman. And, oh boy, is it such an introduction. The music that plays when Pee Wee Herman is making breakfast for himself will be scarred in your brain for life. It is so catchy, so memorable. And I feel like this is the score that I think of whenever I think of a Danny Elfman score. Also, in the same way I had no idea Tim Burton directed this movie, I had no idea Danny Elfman was part of Oingo Boingo until I listened to the Junk Food Cinema episode for Pee Wee's Big Adventure. But now that I think about it, it makes total sense. The score in this movie, and even some of the songs from A Nightmare Before Christmas, have very similar beats to uh, No One Lives Forever, one of my favorite of their songs. Uh, so it makes total sense, and for both Tim Burton and Danny Elfman, this is a fantastic introduction, and would basically start up a collaboration in the same way that John Williams and Steven Spielberg collaborate so often. There are so many memorable sequences in this movie uh, that it's hard to count them all. There's Pee Wee Herman at the Alamo, and as somebody who was born in San Antonio, I really love that. Uh, there's the biker scene where he's dancing to tequila. There's the chase throughout the Warner Brothers lot. There's the dinosaurs. And then there's Large Marge. I mentioned this very briefly in my review for Killer Clowns from Outer Space because the Kyoto Brothers, who directed that movie, did the special effects work for Large Marge. And this moment has never actually, like, frightened me or scared the shit out of me uh, in the sense that... When it happens, it's so out of the blue, I can't help but just laugh at how absurd it is. Because you never really expect something like this to happen in a movie called Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Huh? And, uh, yeah, it's certainly memorable. That was the worst accident I'd ever seen. Be sure and tell him, Large Marge sent ya! Ha 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 ha! Well then the Large Marge I was writing with was... Her ghost. And that's another thing about this movie. The script is just endlessly quotable. There's so many great lines throughout this whole movie. Uh, and uh, my favorite is probably, I bought this pen right before my bike was stolen. Why? What's the significance? 
I don't know. Hey everyone, it's editor Alexander here. So I'm currently editing my review for Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the review that you're currently watching right now, but I wanted to hop on really briefly and tell you my other favorite line in the movie because I'd feel terrible if I didn't quote this line. Go ahead and scream your head off. We're miles away from where anyone can hear you. <laughs> oh, oh god, this movie is so endlessly quotable. I love it. And uh yeah, I had to pull up my vlog camera because, you know, this thing, as of right now, doesn't work. Hopefully I can get it fixed. If not, I gotta get a new uh, camera for these reviews because this camcorder here, while it's in really good quality, doesn't have a mic jack, and I need uh, really good audio as well. But anyway, back to the review currently in progress. Out of all of those sequences, the one that probably sticks out to me the most is the Warner Brothers chase because it is so wacky, it's so out of control, it plays like a straight up Looney Tunes cartoon at some point. And then of course, there's this. Look, I'm contractually obligated to talk about Godzilla whenever he's in a movie or yeah, y yeah, of course I had to mention this right here. Are there any problems with this movie? Well, I have a few, and one is a major nitpick, and I'm going to admit that right now, it is a nitpick. Uh, when Pee Wee Herman ends up in San Antonio, uh, they did shoot in front of the actual Alamo, uh, but uh, when he's at the rodeo, when he's at the parade, and when he's at the biker bar, which I'm assuming the latter is still in Texas, um, it's clear that those sequences were filmed in California because there are no palm trees in Texas and there are no mountains like you see at the biker bar in Texas. One thing about the movie that isn't really a problem or negative, but just irritates the hell out of me is Dottie trying to crush on Pee Wee Herman. Dottie in this movie is played by E.G. Daly, and if you're a kid of the 90s, you remember her as Tommy Pickles on Rugrats and Buttercup on Powerpuff Girls. And in this movie, she is just, she's adorable. Like, she is so cute in this movie, which makes it far more irritating to watch her crush on Pee Wee Herman. And the reason this bugs me so much is because it's clear that Pee Wee Herman is a man-child. He is a character that doesn't really think about romance at all. And you just look at this going, oh, Dottie, you deserve so much better. Just don't waste your time with Pee Wee Herman. He is not interested. It's like when watching Rear Window and Jimmy Stewart is so uncertain about his relationship with Grace Kelly. Dude, what is your problem? Like, this woman is not only drop-dead gorgeous, but she's coming over to spend time with you, eat dinner with you while your leg is broken, and she's willing to help you out with this murder mystery. It's very clear she loves you for who you are. I mean, it's a different circumstance than with Dottie and Pee Wee in this movie, but it still frustrates me nonetheless. That being said, despite my absolute frustration with the Pee Wee Dottie relationship, this is an excellent movie. And when you really think about it, Pee Wee's Big Adventure has no right to be as good as it is because it stars a character who usually works best in short form entertainment, huh? directed by somebody who's never directed a feature before. It's scored by somebody who has never scored a film before. And the script was written by two people who have never written a screenplay before. You gotta keep in mind that Paul Rubens and Phil Hartman came from The Groundlings, an improv school, which is a completely different ball game than actually writing a script. Paul Rubens and Phil Hartman co-wrote the script with Michael Varl, and this is their first time writing a script because the two of them came from an improv background. So what they basically did was just buy the book screenplay, uh, that's actually what the book is called, and just kind of copied that book beat for beat in terms of how to write a screenplay. Uh, and for a first time script from two improv artists, it works so well. Uh, and uh, yeah, this movie is just an absolute blast. Uh, get off your ass and go see it right now. If you, for whatever reason, don't like Pee Wee Herman as a character, I think you need to give this movie another shot because there's a certain charm that absolutely cannot be denied. And like I said earlier, I loved this movie when I was a kid and I love it even more as an adult. So thank you, Paul Rubens, and thank you, Pee Wee, for bringing so much joy in the world. We're definitely going to miss the two of you and I think the best thing to say in this case is au revoir, Pee Wee. Au revoir.
And there you go. That's my review for Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Now, the following year after the success of this movie, we got the TV show Pee-wee's Playhouse, which is funny because Pee-wee Herman was created to be a joke and a satire about those types of kids shows in the 50s, only for them to actually make a legit kids show featuring Pee-wee Herman. But it worked. <laughs> and as for Tim Burton, he would go on to direct Beetlejuice, which is finally getting a sequel this year, so we'll see how that plays out. And then he would go on to direct his adaptation of Batman in 1989. And then, as a perfect segue into the next retro review, much like how Tim Burton directing Pee-wee's Big Adventure led to Pee-wee's Playhouse, his adaptation of Batman would inspire Batman the Animated Series. And that itself would lead into my next retro review, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. I'll be reviewing that movie in two weeks, and like I said when I reviewed Conan the Barbarian, I love the animated series, I have never seen this movie, so we're gonna check this off the list in two weeks. But for now, I wanna know what you guys think about Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Whatever your opinions are, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. If you wanna find me elsewhere on YouTube, you can check out my theme park and travel channel, Alexander Robinson Travel Channel, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Letterboxd, Threads. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.